The bodywork of a car is a challenging thing to design. Not only is it responsible for the aesthetics, the way the car looks, but it's also a key component to the car's safety. If you accidentally hit something, it's your first line of defence. So that begs the question, where do we begin when designing it? Now, in industry, it would cost a lot of money to trial out every single design that they come up with in their minds, which is why we use models. Now, you can see some models over my shoulder, but actually earlier I went away and I built three little goblin models of my own. And you can see with these three designs here, I've tried out some very different concepts. And I've been able to do that because models are something that we can produce very quick and also very cheap, which is why they're loved by industry because they can save money on their research and development before they commit to the final model. Now I love these things and I'm going to show you how to build one of these in this video today. On the screen now is the template used to make the goblin model. Print it onto some printer friendly card and if you don't have printer friendly card just print it on normal paper and then glue it to some cardboard. Make sure it's thin because we don't want it being too thick. Cut the shapes out following the red line and you will get shapes that look like this. Now we'll start on the floor pan first. Following the blue line, fold the edges over. I find using a rule or a straight edge really helpful when doing this part. Once you've folded the edges, grab a little bit of tape and tape it into position. Once taped up, you'll have a finished floor pan that looks just like this. Put that to one side and grab your two side pieces. Again, fold the blue lines. And you'll end up with two pieces that almost look like park benches. Let's put them to one side for now and fold the blue lines on the final V shape. This can be extra tricky, so just be patient when folding them over. They're really fiddly and delicate. And once complete, you'll end up with something that almost looks like a little man walking towards you. Now, grab one of the side pieces and we are going to tape the two little tabs on the top here into the middle of the park bench. The edge should be where the fold is. And once you've taped that on, you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this, with the two folded tabs on the bottom here that will then attach to the floor. So let's bring the floor pan back and we can place this onto the floor pan and the vertical edge on the v-shape should go to the edge of the floor pan like this. Tape that all into position and as it starts to come together you should be able to see how it's starting to look like the goblin car. You can see we have the front supports going into what will become the rest of the chassis and this is what's going to allow us to design the bodywork. So the final side to piece can go at the back and then we have our completed chassis frame. This is everything that we need to start to design the bodywork. So if you've managed to get to this stage well done because that is quite a fiddly little model but it's a lot quicker than putting all the nuts and bolts together on the full chassis. Now you can cover this with absolutely anything you want. Your imagination is the limit. So let's go back to the designs I showed you previously. This right here is my flame car. But you could do anything you want. Maybe choose your favourite animal and model it after that. Or draw pictures of all of your teammates and have them along the side of the car. Either way, they're going to look absolutely amazing. And if they're good enough, you might be able to win the best bodywork award at a Green Power event. Wouldn't that be amazing? Although, maybe you want to focus on a more environmental message. So let's look at these other designs I have for you. It uses plastic milk bottle tops that I've recycled. 
Now recycling is a great way of using scrap material for a new purpose rather than throwing it away. And for plastic that's really important because these bottle tops can take so long to break down naturally, to decompose. This way we've given them a new life and they have been repurposed for something else. The more we recycle, the less waste we create. What about this design? Look at this. It's made of sticks I found lying around on the ground. Wood is a type of sustainable material. Now sustainable materials are really good because they are typically less harmful for the environment and we're not going to run out of them. For something to be truly sustainable, we need to be able to create it as quick as we use it. Now wood grows pretty quick, but something that's really good is bamboo. Now bamboo can grow 30 centimeters in one day. 30 centimeters! Imagine if we grew like that. <laughs> there are many scientists around the world trying to look for new sustainable materials. And maybe one day when you grow up, you could be one of them. But any anyway, I'll get, I'm getting distracted. Back to our original chassis, because I need to show you how to fully cover this car and then we can see what it looks like on a real full-sized version. So what's our next step? Well, we have the model, so we can use this to get the correct size for the side panels. Place the chassis against the piece of paper and mark the edges ready to be cut out. Remember, we will need two of these. Once cut out, we can stick them onto the chassis. Next, we need to cut the side panels to match the shape of the chassis. It should look something like this. The next piece we'll create is the front bumper. Again, use the model to determine the correct size, running the edge across the paper. Cut out the bumper and stick into position. Hey hey, we're almost there. All that's left is to make the bonnet. Exact same process, use the model to get the right size, then cut it to shape. Use the top edge of the chassis to determine the height of the bonnet. We want our driver to be able to see. Now you just have to match the curve. And there you go, your very own model that you can now colour and decorate however you like. This is cool, but we are doing this with a purpose. You see, models are there to help us see how things will fit together on the full scale build. And it's time to see just that. So I need to hand this over to our trusty builder, Steve, and to see if he can come up with something that's just as neat and tidy as our little model here. I wish him the best of luck. Hey, that's quite a different scale, isn't it? Little model, full size car. I guess now, Having seen how these panels work on this uh, model, I can actually get on with making the panels to do the bodywork for our full-size car. So let's get on with that. Now, when it comes to actually making our bodywork panels, I've got a little tip here that can be really useful. What I've done is I've actually taped together some pieces of paper to form a long strip that's going to go round and form what I'm going to call our front bumper. 
Um, and you can see on our little model here that we've got that strip around there. So what I'm doing is I'm going to use this paper. I'm just going to tack it on to the chassis here. And what I'm doing is I'm checking size. So I can see here it's a little bit too tall, this piece of paper. I'm coming from the bottom of the chassis. So what I'm going to do is going to put a little mark here and here as well at the top of where these supports fold over. Now, and I know I've actually got the right length, I've got my bumper that wraps around, I've got my height that I've worked out here. I can take this off the car carefully and I can go and cut a piece of the actual material I'm going to use for my body work, which is going to be corrugated plastic. So it's going to look white again, but it's a bit more rigid and a bit more solid than just a piece of paper, which isn't the best. So now I'm going to go and do that and I'll come back in a moment. Having taken my paper template, I've been away and I've cut out some of my bodywork material. Always recommend that actually an adult does that cutting because it involves sharp blades and we don't want to, to be injuring you ourselves. So I've now on that piece of uh, Corex, it's, it's the name, it's corrugated plastic in this case. I've marked a little center point here. That's the center along the length. Because then I'm going to line that up with my center position on the car. I've also then marked two other positions and that is these corners here um, where it needs a little bit of a fold to get around the corner so to aid that fold I've put a score mark in here with a blunt tool and that means I can actually create a nice straight line bend at each end and that was done by sort of holding the panel to the car and you can see now that actually now that I've done that I can actually hold it in place and it fits really nicely. Now I've actually got to attach it to the car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some marks on my plastic that match up with the holes front and sides of the car. And then I use some cable ties to hold those together. So that's the next step. Let's get that marked up and uh, we can get it actually attached to the car. So in the same way that we did the template for the front of the car, I've now done a paper template for the side of the car, which takes me all the way from just behind the rear hoop through to the front corner here and I've actually then cut out my side panel so now it's time to trial fit that and see if I've cut it correctly so it should line up with the top of our top rail here this corner fits and matches that it sits there and actually what I'm finding now having trial fitted this where it's a bit stiffer than paper is that I'm catching it on the rear wheel here and it's going to slow me down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a cutout and I'm just going to take my pen and run it around the tire because that will give me a nice curve I can cut out. And then we should have a perfect fit. Then we're on to putting some holes in the Corex and we'll cable tie it onto our top rail and also onto the chassis at the bottom and onto our front bumper. And we've got a nice double skin now at the front here, which gives it a bit more rigidity, a bit more, a bit more strength. We've now got our side panel that we trial fitted, first of all, fully secured with cable ties along the top and bottom and at the front. We've also done the same thing on this side, which is a repeat of that side. Um, and now I'm ready to uh, think about cutting my bonnet, as we can see on our model here. So I've got a paper template on now, which I've just tacked on with a couple of bits of sticky tape on the dash panel here. So by taking that over, I can mark it where it folds over the edges here. I can cut that line. I've marked around the, the front, around the top of the bumper line with a marker pen and back up this side. So now I can actually go and get that cut out and then fit it to the car. So going back to our model car, we've got our bonnet on here. We've now having done our template and cut around that template, attached our bonnet to the real car. And that is our bodywork. Hello, me again. Before you go, I just wanted to show you some pictures of bodyworks that have actually made it to the racetrack. Let's check them out. Bamboo, we talked about it and there it is, being used on a goblin car. What about this next one? What an amazing willow design. I don't know how they managed to get it to grow around the car. I mean, that looks absolutely amazing. This next one is really cool. Bottle tops. 
It looked a bit weird on the model, but people actually had the idea to do bottle tops on their car. And again, bamboo for the front grille. What a brilliant design. Ah! So sorry, that one scared me. Really imposing, scary car. You really can do any design you want. Just like this cute little puppy. Not so scary as the last one. What about this very bright flamingo? Obviously, you're not going to miss that on the racetrack. And on top of all of that, you could even have your favourite character from a film, a book, or maybe a cartoon. Your imagination really is the limit. There are only two rules that you need to consider when designing a car. Rule number one, it must fully enclose the driver. The driver cannot be able to escape the car through any other means than from out of the cockpit. And number two, there cannot be any sharp edges. It needs to be smooth to the touch and that way no one will accidentally get hurt when performing a driver change. If you follow those two rules, you should be good to go racing when you show up on the day. And that's the end of this video. If you need any further assistance with the Green Power Project, please always feel free to email or call the office. We also have some brilliant community groups where teams share their experiences and expertise with each other. It's a wonderful place for collaboration, so don't miss out. All of the information you need is in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and maybe even a subscribe. Pretty please? Still, plenty of building left to be done, so I'll catch you on the next one.